The new Blackmagic Cloud options enable more efficient remote collaboration in DaVinci Resolve 18. This is a Synity Gear News video supported by B&H and CVP. Welcome everybody, here is Synity at NAB 2022 and I'm very happy to be at the Blackmagic Design booth with Craig. Craig, how are you? Very well, really good to see you again. Good to see you too, it's been a while. Just a while. <laughs> so actually, Blackmagic is now not just in Australia, you're also in the cloud. We are, what yeah. does that mean? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, so what we've seen with the release of DaVinci Resolve 18 is the implementation of a number of services and technologies that will empower creative and collaborative workflows. We've had collaborative processes, remote grading, and a lot of tools in DaVinci over the years. But what we've now introduced with Blackmagic Cloud and Resolve 18 is a much more uh, complete uh, process for how work groups and distributed production can operate using cloud services and Resolve. So over the last few years, we've seen how important it is to be able to collaborate over the internet, and we've been forced to do that. So how is Blackmagic actually tackling the, the, the online collaboration, the cloud collaboration? Well, DaVinci Resolve has had collaborative tools for distributed production or connecting work groups collaboratively for a number of years. And certainly they've been tool sets and, and the software platforms that people have been able to optimize over the past couple of years. But for us, it was much more about what we could develop into the future. So we've been planning and working around cloud services and what Resolve can bring to companies, post houses, creative groups for a long period of time. What we see now when we're talking about at NAB is the release of DaVinci Resolve 18 and the integration with Blackmagic Cloud. Now what this allows people to do when they're working in work groups and we've got editors in one part of the country, great artists in another, maybe VFX is even in another country, this brings all of those individuals into a much tighter network where they can work collaboratively almost instantly, see each other's work on their own desktops rather than sending data backwards and forwards or having delays in the processes. And what we've built into DaVinci Resolve 18 is a set of tools that allow you to build these projects and share the libraries. So through the Blackmagic Cloud services, you can create libraries. You can choose where they would be hosted based on the speed and the efficiencies of those backbone network services. And then you can start to add individuals into libraries. Uh, you can create multiple libraries, so you can be working on multiple projects with different work groups and keep it very customized in terms of what individuals want to see. So what that allows then inside of DaVinci Resolve is a process whereby you are sharing the libraries and you now have a very simple, really efficient way of Resolve users being linked together so that their changes, as somebody works on one timeline, is fed back. But you have to do something as well in terms of media. So this is where the cloud services come back into their, their own as well. And what we do with Blackmagic Cloud is a different utility and a different set where we're using Dropbox as an agent and to help support the media elements of DaVinci Resolve 18 and Blackmagic Cloud. So with a different setup utility, what we're actually able to do is to build a network connection with DaVinci Resolve through Dropbox, where we can now isolate or say to Dropbox, we want to share particular folders with particular users. And then within your Dropbox account, you can make sure that your teams or your individual users have access to the right folders. And then by connecting that with your Resolve projects, you've got the project information and everything being shared through Blackmagic Cloud in terms of library hosting. And then the media is managed in terms of sharing those out through different utilities and linking the two together. You mentioned Dropbox. I mean, uh, nobody has a Dropbox account that can hold all the media in the project. So how do you manage that? Because, I mean, sometimes, you know, you have a terabyte or two terabytes of data for a project, but everybody has maybe a Dropbox account with like 15 gigabytes or something. Sure, yeah, there are tools inside of Dropbox that will expand that for you. But what's also key and important for us, the way that we're working with Dropbox and the, the network storage on that side, and what we've built into Blackmagic Cloud, is how do we actually have fast and efficient sharing of projects and also of media? So if you and I were working together on a project, and I'm in London, you happen to be in Berlin, through Blackmagic Cloud, I can add you to projects and, and create libraries of, of what we're going to work on. Um, and you can see what I'm working on in real time inside of the software. But the media could be naturally slower. You know, the ability to pull down the right files, how those sync, can be complicated or it can be cumbersome. And, and particularly slow. So we built some efficiencies into the way Resolve 18 works as well. And one of those things that we've looked at is the development of a proxy rendering tool set. So what the proxy renderer does is allows us to create um, a 
folder and we, we choose what media folder we want to work with inside of DaVinci Resolve, inside of our project. We tell the proxy generator to look at that as a batch or a watch folder and then we tell it whether we want it as a H.264, H.265 or a ProRes and it will convert those files for us automatically. If we add any, any more media in, it's a watch folder, it knows to convert them and puts them straight back in as an option. And then we have built into the DaVinci Resolve cut page an option where you can choose to move between your proxies or you can move between your full media. So it means that when you're sharing media between two workstations or in a collaborative group, the proxies can be downloaded first or prioritized, and then you can work with the full files. And then the Dropbox element itself in terms of the cloud setup means that within a Dropbox account, you can determine which folders people are going to be looking at and what media they're going to be using to kind of keep the efficiency of the speed going. Okay, great. And how does the Blackmagic store storage solutions come in here? I mean, how do they, do they tie in with these new cloud services? So the idea with the cloud store is to create a nearline storage option that's been optimized for DaVinci Resolve. So this is very high performance, very fast network storage with global synchronization. So with teams working um, with media, with large store of maybe raw files or, or camera elements, what we can do with the Blackmagic Store projects is we can utilize the hardware speed of these devices. So they're built around M.2 SSD. They're very fast performance media. Um, on the cloud store itself, we have four 10 gigabit connections and we can saturate those with network traffic and the performance across the boxes is incredibly incredibly fast. So what they allow us to do is have distributed network or users of Resolve in different locations choosing to use Blackmagic um, DaVinci Resolve 18, setting up all of your cloud services through Blackmagic Cloud and then using the store products for the media that then is um, being shared between the two. Um, it means that you can have that localized storage very quickly connected. Any changes in the media can be shared between devices rather than relying on media being just in the cloud it comes down to a local desktop as well and because they're local storage you can also use them for additional files around DaVinci whether it's graphical or whether it's VFX elements and then choose to use them as uh, workgroup storage in a facility as well using all of that connectivity and the speed. One of the things we also have with the software uh, built into the cloud store is some monitoring tools so what we can do as well is see how that media is being used, we can see the capacity, we can see which users are connected, and we can see the health and status of these products. So with the Blackmagic store being built around a RAID 5 set for, for data management, we can also see how that's being used. So the Blackmagic store products sit at the back end. So for us it's really important that the, the workflow groups, the use of Blackmagic Cloud to connect creatives together is, is made fast and efficient. The ability with Dropbox and the connectivity through the cloud services to share media point to point as efficiently as possible with the proxy renderer becomes the first part of it. And then Blackmagic Store gives you fast near line storage on your desk. So then you've got no weak points in the collaborative work. You've got your own media, you've got your own library, and you've got fast performing globally synced hardware that goes with that as well. And for the hardware you have, I think, three or actually four different options, right? We do, yeah. So with the Blackmagic Cloud Store, uh, which is the very high end um, of, of the, the options in the hardware, which will be coming later in the summer, we have the ability within those, you've got a, uh, a 20 terabyte, an 80 terabyte, and we'll be doing a 320 terabyte version of that, that product. And then coming down, you have the Black Magic Cloud Store Mini, which is an 8 terabyte device, which will be perfect for people as well if they're moving around or if you've got smaller setups. And then we have the Black Magic Cloud Store Pod, um, and that's a very different device. So this isn't a store product or storage device in of its own right. What it allows you to do is connect USB-C based media, so your own SSDs, your own external storage, and plug into the Black Magic Cloud network. So that's ideal for field use if you are shooting interviews and you wanted to load those in and then share them back to your editor or your team back home, you can use the pod store to link into your projects, use Blackmagic store as the link and send content back home as well. Okay, I see the pod store also has an HDMI port. What, what is that about? So again, the, on the products, the, the HDMI port accesses some built-in software. So what we do with that software was the information that tells you the status and the health of the device, how much media you've used, how much storage space you've got yet left, what users are connected, um, the data rates in and out can be monitored as well, and it all gets pushed out over a HDMI 
um, connection and then just put that straight into a, a simple monitor or whatever's needed. So that same software is used and that same HDMI port is on all of the, the hardware boxes as a, as a monitoring utility or a confidence view of the, the product itself. Let's talk about pricing and availability. Okay, so started with the Blackmagic Cloud Store pod. So these are available now for 395. Then you can move to the actual storage products. The Blackmagic Cloud Store Mini, which is the half rack with eight terabytes, is 3995. And again, shipping and available now. The Blackmagic Cloud Store itself, which is the larger unit, which will have multiple um, storage capacities. Uh, will follow later in the summer. And this is also the device that has the four 10 gigabit connections designed for work group scenarios. So that starts at 20 terabytes for 9595. And then we'll be moving up to 80 terabytes, which will be around $30,000. And then the 320 terabyte version will be something we'll price based on request and see what, what that kind of comes out of at that time. Let's talk about the, the Blackmagic Cloud, um, you know, how, how does, we, we're all getting used to these subscription-based models. How, how is this priced if I want to use the cloud? First of all, no subscriptions. So like DaVinci Resolve itself, we have a free version which can access and use these tools. The studio version of DaVinci Resolve has always been one purchase. We, we don't charge upgrades or incremental prices. We don't subscribe. Uh, cost onto Resolve at all. And the same thinking goes forward into Blackmagic Cloud. The only cost involved in Blackmagic Cloud is when you start to create libraries. So if I was to host a library, I'll be paying $5 per month per library in Blackmagic Cloud. Doesn't matter how many users I share that with, there's no cost to the users, just to the host. And we can then work on that project as needed. The moment I don't need that library, I can take it down from my Blackmagic Cloud account, I start paying that $5. And you can see the billing and you can manage that in your account and work out exactly what your cost might be. So these costs are as minimal as possible. And they really just represent some of the costs that's involved in terms of providing cloud services. But they are very much not subscription based. They can be turned off when not needed. You can come back online when needed. That's cool. So you just use, you use it when you need it and then you switch it off when the project is over. Absolutely. Use it when you need it. Uh, we don't lock you out. So if you don't pay your subscription, it doesn't mean you can't access your content. Yeah. You manage what you need. There's a fee involved in terms of obviously the services of what that offers, but very much as, as accessible as possible and follows the ethos of how we want all of the technologies that we build and particularly around DaVinci Resolve to be accessible to anybody as possible and even starting with the free version of Resolve 18 which is available now on beta. Great. Yeah, so you just mentioned it's already available in beta, which includes the cloud services. What about the store products? Are they? Can you buy them already? Uh, the cloud store pod and Cloud Store Mini are shipping now, and Cloud Store, the larger version, will follow um, in a few months once we finish some more additional hardware engineering with it. All right, thank you, Craig. Thanks for ex explaining. It's quite a complex product, but I think once people get their head around it, it can be so much more efficient for workflows. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned to Synity for a lot more videos from NAB 2022, and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.